you a student, mentor, or parent that loves robotics? Then you're in the right place. Up-to-date info on all things robotics, this is the RoboZone Podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by Kettering University. It's a Kettering-built world. Hello and welcome to the 68th episode of the RoboZone Podcast. This podcast is for Tuesday, July 25th. In this episode, we find out if Robocon was a success, if it was a failure. Of course, it wasn't a failure, but we find out how it went over this past weekend at Robocon here in Michigan. In addition, it's time for you to register your teams. FRC team registration is now open on First Inspires. Get out there, register your team, get ready to pay some bills, and we'll get ready for the next season. So let's get to the interview. The RoboZone podcast is brought to you by AndyMark.com, your robot parts experts. With me, I would like to have uh, Bernadette introduce herself, please. Hi, I'm Bernadette Storks. I am one of the event coordinators, the main one for RoboCon. And I'm also the assistant coach to Team 1684, the Chimeras. And I have Mike. Hi, my name's uh, Mike Savage. I'm the head coach for uh, Romeo's Team 3539, the Biting Bulldogs. I love your I love your logo, Mike. Uh, I <laughs> I used to live in Brighton at one time in my life, and that's the Bulldogs. And I have a Bulldog and puppy in my hand right now. Probably the mascot for the next episode of the podcast. We'll get a right? little yeah. up there. But I love Bulldogs. Anyways, we won't go any further in that in that discussion. It'll take <laughs> hours. Um, but we wanted to follow up on RoboCon. So, Bernadette, tell us a little bit about RoboCon, what happened over the weekend. Um, I think it was a pretty big success. Uh, we definitely upgraded a lot of them in a lot of areas. And in my opinion, the FRC event, this was our first time doing that. Uh, us in 5460 decided to host an off-season event. Hopefully all the teams felt that it went off as well as we did. Um, few things I think we could get make better the air conditioning didn't work quite as well as we wanted <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's okay but the rest of the event I felt was a, a tremendous success success quite a lot of people was up. it as hot this year as it was last year Bernadette no not as hot thank goodness but the humidity was still quite a killer so yeah yeah and humidity and robots are are not good uh, fellows no <laughs> no not always <laughs> So uh, what was the biggest change between last year and this year? Other than, I mean, the first, you have an FRC, full FRC event. That's huge to do. Um, Do do you have any numbers on how many people came through for the weekend? Um, I don't have them yet, actually. I have to get them from the registration desk, but I don't have them at the moment. Um, I know when I looked around and took pictures and video, it was a full house. So, But I would say the biggest change that we had we used to have on the frc field we had the kids driving the robots on that field but we changed it so the whole driver's license activity we do where kids get to drive robots in the five different robotics fields we moved the frc out into the other gym um, so that was the biggest change and then we just upgraded a couple of the games so they were more for an older audience and that went over really well so so mike let's let's uh talk about the biting bulldogs give us a little bit about the history of the team first yeah well this is actually this is my uh my third year coaching uh, um the biting bulldogs i i started in uh, elmont with uh 4961 shock and awesome and started that team and and had met uh dan gardner who was the original founder of the biting bulldogs uh back in 2011 um had met him through that through actually a neighbor and uh when we had moved to romeo um and so the uh you know dan ended up leaving for a, another job and uh they they hired another coach Tim Warnick and um, you know he ended up then leaving for another job and kind of gave me a call and said hey you should uh, you should put your uh, put your hat in the ring here for this and uh, you know it's it's been great ever since it's uh, it's a was a really well organized well run team when I showed up um, I was I was really happy with the the amount of parent involvement that we had as far as mentors. Um, you know, and, and the community has, has been very supportive. The school has been very supportive. Uh, we've got a lot of great sponsors that are, you know, just down the road from from our high school and our practice field. Um, and so it's it's been a, a great time uh, with a, a great group of kids and, a, you know, great, uh, great community. 
And what? how did the Biting Bulldogs do this past season with Power Up? Other than RoboCon, and we'll get into that in a sec, but how did you guys uh, fare in the regular season? Uh, I think saying that we fared was uh, was a is a good way of, of saying it. We, uh, you know, I, I thought the game was uh, was really well well uh, made. I guess I found it very frustrating. We spent a lot of time in the prototype phase, uh, which kind of squeezed our design team. Uh, and then you know everybody knows that when something gets squeezed, it's really the programmers that end up taking the brunt of it. And so, uh, you know, we kind of went into our, our Waterford tournament with a robot that hadn't really worked um, at all in, in up and, then, um, and so it, it performed fairly well uh, in Waterford. We ended up getting, uh, you know, uh, we ended up getting picked up by uh, 1250 and we had lost in the quarters, which was, you know, too bad, but we, we knew we kind of had uh, room for improvement and stuff. And like I had said, we had, we had a lot of kind of issues with the robot that first tournament, the drive team didn't get a lot of practice in har- hardly any practice. And so when we, we came back uh, for the Troy event, did much better. We finished uh, being ranked fifth in, in that event and then um, getting picked up by uh, more Martians. Um, and you know we did did okay with that, making it into the semis. We were pretty pleased with that. We'd had the previous year, uh, we called it the quarterfinal curse, where it, it didn't matter what we did, uh, we got you know bumped out in the in the quarterfinals. So we were real happy to be making it onto the semis and kind of moving up. Um, and at uh, Troy, we had our uh, our business team. I guess you could say get get recognized, you know, and not only them. I mean, obviously the students that were were talking to the judges and stuff in the pits did a really nice job. So we got the entrepreneurship award, which we were very, very happy with. We, you know, like I said, we have a, a great business team, a lot of uh, reaching out into the community and stuff, and uh, we're very happy with them. And so then with with states, we went on and and we're a lot more confident going into. Uh, MSC than than we were going into Waterford that that first event and so we finished uh, MSC ranked ninth um, and ended up you know forming our own alliance and and then making it uh, into the semifinals again there losing to the the team that eventually won the whole uh, Michigan State Championship so I mean you can't uh, you can't feel too bad about that and then of course Worlds was you know we were real happy just to be able to go down there for the uh, it being in, in Detroit the first, uh, you know, for the first year and, and kind of see what that was all about. And we ended up uh, doing doing fairly well. We didn't didn't finish as high as we wanted to, um, but we did end up getting, uh, you know, picked up by 610 and Las Gorillas and, and had a pretty nice alliance there. And again, went into the semifinals. Um, and, you know, we were real, real happy with the way this, the season went. It, it started off very ra- rocky. And uh, we thought it finished pretty strong. So thanks for giving us some information about the, the team in your past season. And we'll get to Robo kind of one more second. But I, I've asked everyone that's come on the podcast this past season what they thought about Power Up. So <laughs> what do you think about Power Up? And Bernadette's answered this question before in a previous podcast. What did you think about Power Up, Mike? I Like I said, I, I really I really liked it. It, uh, you know, it, it seemed like it... Uh, really gave something for for everybody where where uh, you know with uh with last year with steamworks you kind of had all three robots needed to be able to be kind of in in all of the field and and with this one you could have that team that that maybe couldn't do scale and they could come out they could just work vault um i i thought it was a a really well designed game but like i said it it really really frustrated us with our when, when we were kind of coming up with prototypes and designs because there there were just so many, you know, the the end game was what did it for us. Was how are how are we going to guarantee this ranking point? And uh, you know, we we ended up coming up with all these ideas. We this the the first year ever, I think, that we've had an underweight robot where we were weighing in at tournaments at like ninety five pounds because we were trying to uh, you know do various things, the the ramps and you know the forks that would fold down, and then we'd lift other robots up. And so it was it was kind of a relief having that robot that every time you. You went up to the scale, you knew, oh, yeah, we, you know, we added another motor or whatever, but we're still going to weigh in way under the 120. Um, so, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, 
it was a frustrating build season and and to say the least but i i thought the game was fantastic and and i mean especially once you kind of saw what you know uh like strike force and pi what they had done with their uh their uh dropper bars i guess you'd call them for the end game and you know you got all these neat uh neat ideas strike zone uh we borrowed their uh hook detachable hook idea after the, seeing them at the troy tournament and you know we we made that and uh our own version and and went on to msc and and had a lot of you know really good luck with just the uh instead of worrying about how are we going to pick up two other robots just saying well hey we'll just hook on we'll get out of your way and then you can hook on too and we'll climb up as buddies you know and so i i thought it was a really really neat game and i'm i'm looking forward to next year I think one of the monikers for this past season is the is the buddy bar system or or the buddy system because there were many te- there are many teams like uh, NC Gears we climbed off them at uh, state champs uh, as a rookie and it was just in a qualification match and then they came by and they said are you gonna we know you're rookies you're gonna climb off us and I said yeah <laughs> I mean we're playing lights out you know we're trying to right. see if we could get the world. So and they they were nice enough. Anyone that climbed off them this year, they gave you a special sticker. I think it said for having the gumption or something of that nature to to you know climb off us. So it was pretty oh, cool to to do this year. Well, and and I mean that that was a big a big trust issue. You know, like we we had uh, Bionic Blackhawks were on our field at uh, at state championships, and and we ended up playing with them and and their head coach kind of came up to me and he was like, you you guys are going to climb on, off of us, right? And and I mean he was really worried that i mean i think a lot of and i mean we did and it was it was awesome it was a great design that they had but i think a lot of people kind of look at that and say well we've got our robot that we spent all this time building i don't know if we're gonna you know be comfortable putting it in somebody else's hands you know but i mean the the teams that the teams that did the buddy bar and the teams that did the the um lifts on the back i they they did them really really well you know we had I mean, just like like uh, Strike Force when we played with them at uh, MSC. I mean, the the detail and the care that they went around, where they you know they have one of their uh, guys going around with a with a spare ramp, setting it up in your pit, having your driver drive onto the ramp so that when you go out there, you you know what to expect. And I mean, so you know, I I think some of those guys really hit on that and really knew what to do. And and I think it's a trust fall. I think you we could say you know you know, had to have trust that you didn't fall off the rope. Oh, absolutely. So I and we climbed off. We climbed off the Bionic Blackhawks at the. Uh, oh, good God! I can't remember the event, but we were with them, and they won the the chairman's award at that event to qualify for states. So, yeah, it was it was an amazing. It, but it, there were things. There were times where me as a drive coach for my team, I I didn't. Uh, if someone said they had a buddy bar, I really had to look at it. it was, it's something <laughs> yeah. that you had to analyze. It's not just something you just throw the towel in, especially when you're in the qualification matches of just your first district event. You're like, oh, right. no, no, I'm sorry, absolutely. I'm not, not going to climb off you. That's yep. you know, nothing personal. But <laughs> but now let's talk a little bit more about RoboCon. So we have Bernadette, whose team um, went up against your team You know, in, in the yep. finals of that. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about how – uh, your experience with RoboCon. Tell us how you guys enjoyed it. It, it was great. Uh, like like Bernadette said, I mean, every for for being, I I, I don't know if, if you're aware of, of the setup, but they they had basically two gyms. One one gym housed the FRC competition field, and then the other gym housed all the the let's say fun stuff, right? All the other games and all the other fields. And I mean, it it ran really smooth. Like I, I was very nervous about bringing. You know, we have a fairly, a ridiculously large cart for our robot and uh, kind of trying to squeeze that down some of the hallways at some of the uh, district events we go to is is quite a challenge. But I mean, they, they had it just all figured out where, you know, they had numerous safety guards on, on either crossing guards, if you will, on either side of it where they were stopping the flow of traffic, letting the robots through. Um, maybe maybe it's the fact that it's it's been run so many times but but they had the games just running you know like clockwork all of the matches were were great and uh right on time um my my kids loved it it gave gave us some some chances to get some new hands in working on the robot you know in the pits and and we were real happy with that it gave us uh some some time to to work on our auton too you know it's it's real nice to actually be able to 
to do your code and programs on the robot that's going to perform instead of on a practice robot that even though you build it, you know, to the best of your knowledge, identical uh, to the, the competition robot, for some reason, you know, stuff just doesn't always transfer. There's slack in the chains or whatever. And uh, so, I mean, our, our programmers really, really worked on this because they wanted to, you know, they wanted to show that they could do the multi-cube auton that, that we had seen teams doing um and so they you know they with having the comp bot to work on they they were able to pull that off and and so it was great um you know and and we we finally kind of felt i guess all all season that we were able to start each match you know if if not with an advantage at least on a, a level playing field where we were putting two cubes into the scale or or two cubes into the switch and auton um and then you know with with seeing what the engineers had done with their robot uh you know, for I believe they they had it ready for IRI to do that, but their their three cube auton, um, you know that that was our our big reason for picking them was just saying, boy, if if we could go out and you know we can do two cubes into the switch, an auton, you guys can do three or you know two if they have to cross over. Uh, we thought that'd be you know dry, regardless of drivers, that'd be a, a really solid uh, beginning. And and I mean that, with that game especially. It seemed if, if you started out, you know, where you were trying to play makeup on that on that scale, it it was a really uphill battle, you know, to, to gain the scale back and and so having those autons was fantastic and having having a a, a competition to to show off the autons. I, I was really appreciative of uh, you know, Bernadette extending the invitation to us and uh I, I thought it was just a great event. I had uh actually a, a high school buddy that lives over that way now and he just just randomly showed up with his eighth grader and i mean they were just blown away they'd, they'd never seen an frc event and so i mean what a what a great thing where not only can they go in and and watch a match but then they can go in they can drive the robots around in the next room you know and so it was it's really a really a neat setup that they have i bet you get bit by the bug i caught it oh bit by a- the absolutely bug. i mean I, I think not you know not only did the uh the eighth grader but I think his dad might have a little bit too so <laughs> it, it's always good if you can uh you know if you can bring in some mentors that's uh that's the way to do it so who and mike who are the other you said the engineers who is your uh, second alliance partner along with the engineers and, and then uh 6085 who's the the green devil bots and so you know they were they were just a, a great team, you know, and it's, it's, uh, with, you know, uh, as I'm sure all of you guys know, you know, I mean, the, the way the, the qualifications end up, I mean, a lot of it kind of plays into, you know, did you get a good schedule? Um, and so, you know, it was, it was, uh, really nice. Our, our schedule turned out very well. We were pretty happy with it. I, I think we, we, uh, did a lot, you know, to, to make kind of pave our own way as well but um you know then having 6085 come in uh they they just did great they had uh you know two drivers um they wanted to rotate in a a a freshman for one of the matches and he kind of you know the senior did the first match did did great they worked the vault for us and uh you know then the the freshman came in and he did you know we were a little little leery about that but we figured if all if everything went horrible you know we've still got another match to uh to make it up but i mean he did great he held his own and you know great team the coach was you know we had you know obviously you got uh clint on your team with engine nerds <laughs> and uh you know strategy kind of defaults to him and and so i mean their coach was was very understanding of that and uh you know was was uh very coachable you know he, he told us at the beginning because we were in that middle position you know tell tell me what my guy needs to do and, and we'll get it done and and they did so and I'm glad the the freshman got some stick time because this is one of the things with off season events is where you can break in kids that are going to come up and come into your next FRC season because you have a bunch of seniors that may have left your team. So it's right. a it's a good good time to throw them to the fire and see if they can drive or not drive. At least you get some of that the cobwebs out or you get the the nervousness out. So when the, they the get off, yeah. Off, yeah FRC season. And they're at their first event, and it counts, you know. Not that this didn't count, you know what I'm saying. But oh no, no, I, I I totally I totally agree with you. It's and I mean it it really is, you know. I mean we we've had we've been fortunate enough to to have a practice field that that we've been able to use um, since before I've I've been here. And I mean you you can have your kids practicing and practicing and practicing, and and you show up to that event and you've got packed bleachers and you know it's. Uh, 
it's it's a little bit on the nerves for sure. I mean, for for everybody, I'm sure even even the uh, even the drive coaches get uh, get butterflies in their stomach, or at least I hope I hope they do. I know I do. I do. So, <laughs> I do. <laughs> and especially those those poor uh, uh, people that were up in the airship two years ago. I feel so bad oh, for those people. Yeah. <laughs> They they might as well have just had a spotlight just right I can't on them. Remember their their name? I'm trying to block it out. But uh, the pilot, yeah, you know, oh, the pilots, yeah, the poor pilots, because they would get screamed at all match. Yeah, by and everyone. You, I mean, you can't hear anything, but but it's. <laughs> I mean, uh, we'll, but, we'll we'll talk a little, little bit about deep space in a second, Bernadette. And I'm not going to ask you how you feel about losing to Mike's team, but <laughs> how did how did those final rounds go? Was it really competitive for you? Were you Watching from the stands, biting your nails, seeing what's going to happen. Well, actually, yep, I was on the floor again behind the behind the you know glass with the teams. Uh, well, what, one thing is really neat is that even though um, us in Strike Zone we hosted it and we built across the hall from each other, we've never been on alliance together. So that was actually kind of neat for us. Uh, we were on the same field at Worlds, and someone nabbed them right before we could. We were the eighth alliance, and we didn't get to grab them. So, this was kind of neat for us to do that, even though we uh, um, <clears throat> we didn't win, but that's okay. <laughs> I, mean, I think the, the best alliance won. We were standing back there, actually. Uh, John and I, our drive coach, our main coach, watching Clint play, and we seen that three Q baton and the scale, and we're like, "Well, if we lose, it might be because of that." <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we knew why they got picked. Uh, so. Well, if it, if it makes you feel any better, Bernadette, I, I think we uh, donated our vacuum to you because we were unpacking oh, no. the trailer today and we noticed that that was missing. So. Oh, no. Well, I, find it <laughs> I left for vacation the very next day, so I am, I don't even know where half the stuff went. I couldn't no, that's, that's a big but lost and found it, item right there. <laughs> right, right. I, I don't know. It, it was. It, it, it's a good trade for the uh, for the championship trophy. I'd I'd take that at pretty much any tournament we go to. If all I had to do was donate a vacuum, I'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, right? I think we we but we might even donate donate Tyson or Dysons at that point. You know, right, extra hundred right. price tag for what you're paying for your robot and everything to get in. Yeah, it, that's a good Absolutely. investment, I'd say. So <laughs> I'm I'm glad you guys both came on tonight. I, I'm. Glad you had time, and, and especially, Bernadette, you're on vacation. And, Mike, you just came out of a summer build session tonight to come on board. So yep. I'm glad you guys both came on board, and, and we heard a little bit about RoboCon. I'm glad it's expanding, and I can't wait to see what happens You know, next season. You you have to step up, right, Bernadette? It's not like you can go down from this point. You're going to have to see what else we can throw at the wall and make it stick. All right, especially since the... It's the moon landing anniversary, plus with the deep space, and that's why Robocon started. I know you had Tony Diodato on last time talking about that. That's why they picked the date. So we plan to, you know, kind of mix the space theme in a little bit, and we'll see. We have some ideas, but we'll see how it goes. So, so I think uh, to it's about, Tony was an FTA, right? Didn't he? Do yep, that? he was one of the FTAs. We had tremendous support from first volunteers. We're all on board and came out. I was ecstatic. I was. Very, very happy with the turnout of volunteers we had. Yeah, very just, well ran. Don't worry. I feel bad that Tony couldn't wear his favorite shirt, so someone would ask him about the moon landing stuff. I know we joked a while on with him the last episode about that. Oh, he gave his little speech during the opening ceremony. So. Yeah, it was, oh, it was great. a great, great, great speech. He, yeah. did, he yeah. did get to touch on it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, and, and and this is gonna be this next season is gonna be his whole season is gonna be like that because this that's his favorite thing. I know we we joke about it, uh, but Tony's a wealth of knowledge. If you want to know anything about the moon, you know the moon landing. So, so that that leads to me to my final question I have for each of you, and we'll start with you, Bernadette. I don't think I asked you this one before, but if you would just entertain me asking you again, what do you think Deep Space is going to be? What kind oh, of game do you think it's going to be? Well, I think I will always agree with what John always said. I hope it's a shooting game. I love them. Love shooting games. I was a huge fan of Steamworks, and I like Stronghold as well. Um, I hope it's some kind of shooting game, not Frisbees, but um, anything else, I'm not sure. Hopefully the surface isn't slick. We don't want a 10-year anniversary Lunacy. of that. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think maybe it'll be a shooting game. We'll see. End game, I don't know. They've had us climb the last three years, so that maybe might be something different. I don't know what, though. Maybe a balancing? I don't know. 
Or, or maybe a little bit of all that. We have maybe. no idea yet. Yeah. And what do you think, Mike? What do you think um, Deep Space is going to be? I, I really just have given up, you know, doing this five years and trying to guess what the game's going to be. I'm, I'm 0 for 5, and I have a feeling that I'll be 0 for my career. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe some kind of a, a rough terrain. I'm, I'm picturing pneumatic tires coming back, uh, you know, for, for this season. So, so we'll see. And then like, like Bernadette said, I, you know, I always hope for a shooting game. I think it's fun to show off to people that, uh, you know, don't have, haven't, uh, experienced, uh, FRC. And, you know, if, if you can be launching something, which that kind of, that kind of goes along with, uh, with the whole deep space thing. Uh, so we'll see, and and we have been climbing an awful lot. So that's that's kind of like launching yourself, or uh, you know, maybe pulling yourself up to the space station. Who, who knows? Maybe they'll they'll bring back the airships and uh, make the kids wear uh, astronaut suits while they're out there. You know, they're kind of shaped like the moon lander. All you have to do is put a, right? a different top on them, right? Yep. Yep. And the new, the pneumatic tires, it it sounds pretty cool. The only question I would have, because I just left as a rookie coach, and now I'm a second year coach, right? Our right. team's a second-year team. Um, would that mean that they put pneumatic tires in the kit of parts so that everyone's, you know, equal? No, you know, I, I think they go, I think it's it's uh, the standard, is it the Andy Mark six-inch wheels? Yep. And so, I mean, I, I think you can get it, you can get away with a, with a lot of, uh, you know, you those will get you through a lot of stuff for sure. So I think any any rough terrain or whatever that they might have out there, I think the Andy Marks could handle. Um, if you end up needing some pneumatic tires, give me a call and we can uh, we can get something it's going. It's been recorded. You hear that, Bernadette? I just got a free set of tires. Got it. Right? Hey, you, gotta, you know, Kyle uh, Kyle Hughes when I first started said, "Hey, every everybody helps you your first year, and and a lot of people help you your second year, and then then your third year they they kind of kick you out. So you're on your second year, man. I'll I'll." I'll take care of you. I'll take you. I'll take you up on that offer, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you both uh, again for coming on board tonight. Uh, you guys got to be exhausted. And Bernadette, um, enjoy wherever you are for your vacation. Yeah, have you get vacation. up to this call? I'm totally jealous. Um, <laughs> but as you sign out, please tell us again your first name, last name, the team you're from, and then how we can follow your team on social media. And we'll start with you, Bernadette. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stortz. I am assistant coach for Team 1684, the Chimeras. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Chimeras1684. And our website is first1684.com. And, Mike. and I'm, oh, I'm Mike Savage. I'm the head coach for uh, Romeo's FRC 3539, the Biting Bulldogs. Um, and I wish I could tell you our, our media. I can tell you if you go to bitingbulldogs.com, it'll have everything listed there, and you can you can follow us through that. And we'll put those in the show notes. Thanks, guys, for coming on board again tonight. Enjoy your rest, and uh, we'll get see you pretty soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much, Pete. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by andymark.com, your robot parts experts. Again, I'd like to thank Michael and Bernadette for stopping by, telling us about all the fun happenings at Robocon this past season. You have listened now to the 68th episode of the RoboZone podcast. You can follow us on Google Music, iTunes Podcast, and SoundCloud. We thank you for listening to the podcast. If you have a suggestion of a topic that you would like to have covered on the podcast, please reach out to us. You can email us directly at robozonepodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to the RoboZone Podcast. We look forward to talking to you next week, and have a great day. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by Kettering University. It's a Kettering-built world. Thanks for listening to the RoboZone Podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. Find us online at RoboZoneTV.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>